<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Punchup.live slash Ian Finance for all my dates. Punchup.live slash Jordan Jensen for all of hers. <laughs> <laughs> Come laugh till you piss. Don't piss here. Piss it on the road and see us live. Bye. I'm coming all over. Oh, God. oh no, that's me when I look nice. Dude, Ethan, stop the day. Telling jokes and having smokes, riding bikes all through the night. It's a wild ride when you're being Ian. Coffee ice, no matter what. Now you know he likes it in the butt. It's a wild ride when you're being Ian. Being Ian. Life is shit, but you're positive. Let's find out what it's like to live a life. Being Ian, being Ian with Jordan. Are we good? Yeah. Can I have the shofar, please? Oh, of course. Let's get this thing started. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to a episode of Being Ian with Jordan. Ian. I'm Ian. I'm Jordan. And I'm so excited for crazy, today. Crazy, crazy guest today. This is the coolest is thing in the world guest. to have the wonderful, the fantastic Harlan Williams with us. Wow, I'm honored. Thank you. You know what's really weird? You know, if you, you know how like you watched a movie so many times as a kid? Yeah. And it yeah. and it penetrates your brain. I couldn't figure out why you were so penetrated in my brain. Whoa. Like you were in there, in there. Like and how it's deep? Deep it in my vagina. Your brain's in your yes. brain. Yes. <laughs> That's is? where I keep it. Uh -huh. Was I like like all the way in or just like three quarters? Cervix. Cervix bump bumping. Knock oh. it on the devil's door. Whoa. And oh, it was Dylan from on line three. It was from your dead face <laughs> in whole nine yards. Oh, right. Your dead face. Yeah. Because I watched that movie so many times. Oh, wow. My whole life. And when I was young, I think I folk fixated on your dead, dead face. face. Yeah. Why? Why that? Why did you... I was a morbid child? <laughs> yeah. But I remember that so well. And I was like, why is he in there dead? Like, why is he in there dead? And then I figured it out. Wow, well, I could tell you a good story about that dead scene if you want, but I, I don't. Love you know, that. you guys, I don't want to. No, take, please, steer please, it in the please. wrong please. direction. Let's sit at your feet There's and no listen direction. to a story from Papa. Yes. <laughs> well, so that's in that uh, movie, the whole nine yards. Uh, Bruce Willis shoots me. Yeah. He kills me. I'm I'm looking up at Amanda, uh, Pete. Pete's. I was gonna say Teets, but yeah. it's Amanda Pete's breasts in the window <laughs> and it beats teeth willis Say it 10 times fast I, I wish i could but a breast genie would appear <laughs> um, but in the scene she distracts me i look up she's hanging her naked breasts out the <coughs> out the window while i'm distracted bruce willis shoots me so then the scene is michael clark duncan comes scoops me up they're at a house in the suburbs a fairly big house and Michael Clark Duncan from the Green Mile like carries my yeah. I'm a pretty big guy. I'm I'm like six two, like two ten. Yeah. And and he's like carrying me in his arms, like yeah. almost effortlessly. It was kind of wild. And, How big is he? Oh, he was he was huge. He's six seven. Yeah. He's, he's big boy. It's no, like, he's probably Probably yeah, maybe about six six. Wow. And he was, but he was just wide like a truck. And, yeah. You know, remember the Green Mile? Up? Yeah, just massive arms and safe. You feel? Yeah, I felt safe. Yeah. I actually cuddled with him. Yes, and he was lactating too, so I <laughs> got a little sip. But <laughs> so the scene called for him to carry me into the house. Well, with Bruce and Amanda and the whole gang was there, and uh, he drops me on the floor in the foyer. Yeah. And um, so we did a take, and the director was this British guy, Jonathan, from the UK, and uh, sort of a very 
more more of a straight lay serious kind of intense guy and this just this story is about the star power of bruce is what it is so okay. we dropped the body and we we caught and bruce goes uh, looks around he goes jonathan all the lights are on like the hall light and the foyer was all lit up and jones yes that's right bruce and and Bruce is like, this is in front of the whole cast and crew. And Bruce is like, well, we're, we're carrying a body in. You know, they'd want to hide it. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to do all this. It's, it was a nighttime shot. They don't want to do it with all the lights on and everything. And wow. Jonathan was like, no, it's okay, Bruce. It's just fine. Let's do it again. And, and, John, and Bruce was no, wait a minute. You know, and then, and then it sort of started to get a little tense. Wow. And so they started kind of going back and forth and then. You know, there's all these little doors off of the foyer, like offices and bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And Bruce just goes, Jonathan, can I uh, see you in the, oh. one of these rooms for a second? And we're all just standing there, like Michael, everybody. And they go in for about five minutes, and then they come out, door closes, and Jonathan just, all right, turn off all the lights. Oh, my like God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was like, it was just, but Bruce wasn't a dick about it. He was right. right. Like, it it, 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 it needed mm. to be, you know, it was a, it was a, they're carrying a murdered body around, and but it was just amazing to see Bruce just take I control. I yeah. never imagined him to be a guy with notes like that. Yeah, Bruce reason. was very astute and very, like, he, he took everything. He was so much fun, but he's very serious and very wow. Like it all mattered to him, you know. And that was a detail that I didn't even think of, no or way. nobody else did. But he, he didn't need to pick it out, but he did. Yeah. He wanted it to be right, what and was he it, was right. What was the television show he was on? Was it the Honeymooners? <laughs> no, wasn't it Honey Honeydew Mountain Dew? Honey no, Honey Who Bruce Willis? Oh, honey, honey I'm, I'm 19 years honey old. Pot, honey Pot. The Honey. It, Honeymooners with Jackie Gleese? No. No. It was moon, Moonlight. Moonlighting. Yes. Moonlighting. Moonlighters. Yeah. Moonlighting. Moonlighting? Yeah. Moonlighting. Well, he was like a soaps. He was like a television star. Yeah. And so when he jumped to Die Hard, everybody was like, you're not going to make it. Yeah. This is terrible. I'm no one's so going to watch sexually this. sexually attracted to him. They didn't want him to the point Moonlighters. That yeah. They took his image off the poster. Yeah. They were so sure that he it was, was gonna not going to be bank office. So they just thought, well, let's put action like a helicopter and buildings mm -hmm. versus this guy that nobody likes or yeah. isn't a star. And boy, were they wrong. That's crazy. Yeah. For yeah. Die Hard? For, For Die, Die Hard. Hard, yeah. Wow. And then that was like the action movie. Uh, oh, that yeah. made him a complete star. He was like this yeah. blue collar, rough and tumble little guy. Yeah, Woo. yeah. And it sort of it sort of set the the bar for action movies after that because yeah. it was it was sort of you know it was sort of a modern like into the eighties like it was kind of a new era of action. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the kind of was almost the birth of the 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 quippy lines, you know, yes. like Kippy Kai Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sort of became oh, the birthplace yeah. for I'll be back and movies started doing that. Oh after yeah. And that. then and then Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies, when he kills a guy on a missile, he goes, You're fired. Yeah. yeah like, and Mission Impossible, they have a bunch of catchphrases in yeah, there. Yeah. And Ooh. I think it all came started with Die Hard, I think. What would your catchphrase be if you killed a bad guy in a movie? Uh, I hope you like uh, raspberry turnovers because you're about to go to the big bakery in the sky. <laughs> that sounds great. What would yours it's be? a long one, but mine it would works. be. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> I'm really yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, that was a really mean thing that I just did to you. And would you send a gift basket right after? No, I think I would. I think I'd be too scared. I think I would kill somebody. I've thought about this too much. Yeah, and then I would go. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. this isn't real life. Oh, oh, oh. This isn't a movie. But it is oh. to her, though, guy. Mm. Yeah, she I, wants to kill. Yeah. You want to? I think I would say sorry, and then I would I would put, I definitely do the thing where you put some object on their eyes. <laughs> yeah. I think that's so neat. Yeah, I'd Close put, like, eyes. pennies, or I'd put oh. Lego. Oh. Nice, yeah. one Lego on each. Yeah, and oh then when God. they rolled them over in the grave, their eyes would, like, snap shut or <laughs> yeah. pull their face. So I'd put poker chips on there, and then I'd be the oh. poker chip killer. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then they go, did you do it? And I go, no. And they go, he's got a good poker face. Wow. Oh. What about Pringles? Pringles would be good because you could stack them. Oh, yeah. Pringle eyes. Yeah. And you just can't have one, so you yeah. got to put a bunch right. of Sour there. cream and onion. The killer's Pringle just death kicking eyes. away rats. Yeah. Being like, oh, that's my thing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. my thing. 
Yeah. Or if you're in the South, barbecue eyes. You could you could like season it to wherever you Ooh, do the that's killing. A good Japan idea. sushi eyes. If that's if that's <gasps> what Pringle makes. Sushi's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's really oh, really sushi good. On the the takeout killer. Ooh. Yeah, take him out. I took him out. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. And if and when I killed him, I go, you better leave a tip. Wow. And there ain't gonna be no cremation because you're going raw. Oh right? yeah, it's sushi. Yeah. You uh-huh. can't, can't cremate them because that's cooking them almost, right? Yeah. And then, like and then if think. I and then if I cremated them, <laughs> I go, "You're tempura because you're fried." Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh. Or you could just kill them and then just put a tiny bit of rice on them, like with a bow, and go. Now you're sashimi, bitch. Wow. You know. Oh, no, you could go. Dead you could go sashimi in hell. Wow. Yeah, I was trying to think. Shashim like you in hell. Shame on you. Shame on you, <laughs> motherfucker. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, welcome you to the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Really you. Highbrow. You. Are you? Go. You. Do you? Do you? you? Uh, please. When? I. I like, have he. So she. Me. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Are you? Well, you go ahead. Can I? If, if you don't. For sure? I, so she. It's not me. You. Well, then let me go first. Please go ahead. <laughs> Are you plugging something? Are you doing plugging? A, plugging? Are you doing a round of pods for any? Uh no, no. I'm uh, I'm just um, doing pods. I'm, nice. I, I mean, I, the only thing I ever really plug is my uh, my podcast, The Harlan Highway. Hell yeah! But uh, That's great. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, The Harlan Highway has something to do with cars. No, it's just uh, when I came up with the name, it just f- felt like it bounced off of my name, Harland Highway. Yes, okay, and, it, okay. and it's a journey. It's a, you're taking you on a little ride. It's mm-hmm. just kooky, catchy marketing. I That's like what it. I do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, but I came up with a lot of famous jingles. Did you? Yeah, Pepperidge Farm Remembers. Do you remember that one? No, Pepperidge how did it go? Farm Remembers. That was mine. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, I came up with that. No, you and, didn't. Yeah, pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Alka Seltzer. Wait, what's going on? How did you no. know? What, 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 what does that look like getting into that business? It's just when it's almost like when you when you rhyme when your when your mind's always rhyming when your mind's always jingling. Yeah, you jingles. couldn't even get out of rhyme just then when you were trying, know, to, like, trying when to. your mind is in rhyme, right? dancing the words around. <laughs> um, I what? did the one for uh, Summer's Eve, uh, the the douche. That one was a I'm, fun one. What's that one? Ride the horse to smell town. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, it's you, not. Remember the girl, that is the you girl, don't know Summer's Eve. Yeah, I'm it's the, a douche product. She's I on the beach with her is. horse, and yeah. she's riding on the way, like on the in the sand. You wrote a jingle that they used that For was ride the horse mm-hmm. to smell town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was as surprised as you <laughs> that's are. That's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> that's that's my newest one for Dairy Queen. <laughs> is he telling the truth? <laughs> Summer's Eve. Yeah, look it up. Is yeah. he telling the truth? We yeah. got the meats. How about that one? I that's that Arby's. One. Yeah. No. Yeah. You wrote that? Yeah, and I got uh, Ving Rhames because we did a movie together. We did uh, so I got him in, and he's the, he does the voice. You've heard him voice it. Yeah, obvious. We've got the meats. I Wait, can't do his voice. Why is a comic writing jingles? It's just a side hustle. It is a side hustle. Yep. I thought it was a musician side hustle. Yeah, but do you remember every artist is multi talented? <laughs> what? What is it? Do you think he's fucking with me? Ride the horse to smell down. <laughs> you think that's a real? You think that's a real thing? Oh, <laughs> Ride the horse to smell down. Dude, listen to me. I'm so gullible, and the only way that I ever know when anybody's fucking with me is I can feel the earth shaking, and I look, and Ian is. <laughs> shivering with joy. He's shivering. He's like, yeah. but dude, I knew that was a lie. And then when he goes, ah, uh, yeah, Arby's, you got the ma- and Ving Rames. I go, it does sound like Ving Rames' voice. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> He's a liar. It actually is Ving Rames. No, it's not. Yeah, he, it has to be. He, he does. We've got the meats. No, but did That's you Ving write Rames that from Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Check. To ask your producer, Cal. Can you look that up? Cal. Cal, look it up. Ving Rames. 
because we got the meats. I should know. I got him in on that gig. <laughs> He's right? not a jingle man. I want to do that. He's more of a jangle like fella. Why can't I lie like that? Well, <laughs> it's not, you'll see. Who did the voice? Ride the horse to smell that. And I was like, no way. Well, well you got to sort of whisper it. It's not, you don't say, yeah. ride the horse to smell <laughs> And then Summer's Eve, picture the Summer's Eve douche fading I in. I did and then a mother and her daughter on a white horse. Yeah, in the surf, and then daughter. a cross dissolves. Yeah. That's inappropriate. <laughs> well, no, because daughters douche too. They don't. They a learn from their mother. A mother has a stinky kid. No. Yeah. Oh, because it comes out. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Did you find it? Did you can you verify? Bing Rames does the Arby's voice, yes. But did he write it? Did did Ving Rames get that job from Harlem Williams? <laughs> That's um, gonna be some dark web like deep dive. Yeah, I stuff, need to dive more into Google for a second then. I kind of give that one out so you don't have to do it. Uh, like your your guy doesn't have to research, you can focus on the show. But I throw out stuff that would take too long to research. Here's uh-huh. why you got me to believe you. Because there's a comic named Mike Denny who has like one leg or something. I don't know where he is now, but he's Denny or, or IHOP. Mike Denny. <laughs> <laughs> well, she said one leg. I mean. How? How did you just do that in your mind that fast? How did you just, how did you just no pun intended, make one that leg jump? IHOP. How did you make that leap? Because I douched before I got here. I rode the horse to smell town. <laughs> Denny or I <laughs> The Pepto Bismol one. The, whatever that one is. He's like a rap producer now. He used oh. to live up the street. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but were you thinking of Denny's as in Denny's restaurant and IHOP comparison as well? Right. When you said How did Denny's, you do that? Well, because you said one leg. <laughs> I know, but Denny's, it was so fast. But the next iteration, the the logical step forward, Only and I don't mean to say step forward, but I did, <laughs> would be IHOP because when you only have one leg, you hop. I know, but uh-huh. you had to make this. The, the did you? Did you hear about the girl with one leg? What? Her name was Eileen. I <laughs> don't have to laugh. You don't have to laugh. We don't. A lot of times we don't laugh at him. <laughs> you get it. I I got I got it. I oh, got okay. It. <laughs> Big just, league. Just yeah. checking. Yeah, Eileen. <laughs> what else could you call them now that we're going down the list? Uh, Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg. Yeah. Falls a lot. Falls a lot. <laughs> Captain Nublins. <laughs> if there's two missing legs. Captain yeah. Nublins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wood leg peg. You are, you took peg for me. Mm. Yeah. Crutch shell. <laughs> for Michelle. <laughs> Did you say crush shell? Crutch. Crutch, crutch shell. shell. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think of more. Uh, um, cerebral fallsy. Whoa! Oh, there you go. There you go. I like yeah. that one the most. Uh-huh. That's great. That's really good. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. guys. It also sounds like a small northern lumber town too. <laughs> cerebral like fallsy. Yeah. Yeah. Sleepy town. For the weekend and cerebral fallsy and uh-huh. kayaking in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, it's like where a spinoff of Twin Peaks takes place. That's right. That's exactly what it feels like. Cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. When you when you were the hitchhiker and there's something about Mary, did you make up those jingles? Yes. Stop it. Yes. (laughs) Stop. They they did let you. Oh yeah, they told me to. How'd you get hooked up with the Fairley Brothers? Uh, through Jim Carrey. Really? Yeah, I was doing stand up a lot with Jim and in Canada. uh, no, and when I moved, I just moved to Hollywood from Canada. I didn't know Jim until I moved to L.A. Really? So how'd you get hooked up with Jim Carrey? Well, when I first came to L.A., I was working at a comedy club called The Laugh Factory on Sunset. Uh-huh. And Jim was doing In Living Color at the time. And he would go and do spots at the, at the Laugh Factory, you know, just because he was still doing stand-up at the time. And uh, I was just making my entry into that. I just moved to L.A. and started doing spots there. And Jim saw me and loved what I was doing. And so he told the Farrelly's to come and see me one night. 
And so they came to see me and then Jim was like, Hey, let's, let's have Harlan read for dumb and dumber. And, and, and then I did dumb and dumber. And then after dumb and dumber, they just phoned me and said, Hey, we want you to be in something about Mary. I didn't have to, uh, they just called oh my me. God. And, yeah. It was really uh, that's an crazy. honor. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It was that's really, we're waiting was for really, every day. it was really uh, exciting. That's amazing. Those are like yeah. two of the most memorable roles in the Fairley Brothers films. Thank you. Yeah. 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 They, they, I'm, I'm astounded how they've resonated over the years, but people really enjoy them. And you can I, quote them on stage. Everybody knows them. Yeah. yeah. There's movies like so quickly. My favorite part is you can see, I, and, and this is the way I saw it. I, I don't know if it was real. I quoted it last night. The come here. I quoted it last oh, yeah. night. Oh, there's something in my marriage. Yes. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. crazy. Well, when, yeah. when you're in the car and you go, step into my office. Yeah. And he goes, why? He goes, because you're fucking fired. Yeah. You can see Ben Stiller laughing. Oh, really? From from the angle, yeah. Oh, wow. You yeah. know, Ben, we did about six or seven takes. Like, mm -hmm. the Fairley said, do it again, do it again. and oh, the same breaking? thing? Or you kept yeah. making stuff No, up. every take I do something new. Yeah. And, and, and to, to Ben's credit, I couldn't have done all that riffing without him staying in it and he only broke a couple of times and i didn't want him to break yeah it's always a compliment when you can make another funny person break yeah because it's like oh they think i'm funny but but i knew for it to work he'd have to stay in it and he did and he was so great to bounce off of because it it felt very real in that moment and if you watch the scene it it feels very yeah. real because he's just like well, what do you mean you're like he just he plays it so good, and it just gave me the ability to, to just play with him, and the scene felt very real because of that. Yeah, yeah. I watched that in bloopers where you can see the person break, and then they're immediately like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Yeah, and yeah. it's because it's like it's, but everybody loves it. But then you can tell that they're like, "No, but let's." This is so funny that I don't want to break. So yeah, a lot of time it, it ruins a great take. Like, and 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 especially when you're improvising, once you do it, it you can't get it back. And when you improvise a take and someone breaks, you it's rare you want to redo the improvisation because now the it's same lost. Line, it's, right? It's, yeah. it's 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 snap. Lost it's not as turn, authentic, yeah. right? Have Have you ever gotten pissed, or have you seen any anger towards a breaker? That was with me. Yeah. Um. Like, have you ever been like you're breaking too much? No, I I feel like I remember. I've been with some actors that maybe necessarily weren't great at improvising. And instead of like Ben is, is a master class in, he knew his character was somber and real. Yeah. And my guy was an insane serial killer. So he knew he was disciplined enough to stay in his zone and let the madman talk. Oh, and nice. sometimes when you improvise with people that aren't as seasoned or don't have as great instincts as Ben does, his comedy, you know, timing and his seasoning is impeccable. But sometimes you'll get someone that goes, oh, this guy's improving and being wacky. I've got to step up and match yeah. that or meet it. Oh, and it steps yeah. on that they don't have the wherewithal or the patience to go, my character isn't supposed to be wacky and crazy that character is so i've i've had a few moments when the other actor as as i think it's just an insecurity where they go oh i've got a that person's getting this moment i've got to join it mm -hmm. and it doesn't suit their character in that moment mm -hmm. right right so you always got to service the the movie and the character versus servicing your own i just gotta be a ham right. you know yeah so how I've, do you how do you stay grounded in reality when you have to be a crazy person you know like yeah, I think it's, you know, with that character, I actually just just immersed my mind in, I am crazy. I, I am this guy. He he lives, he's a, he's this mad serial killer, so he just lives in this persona. Uh -huh. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to find anything. I just, I just did a switch. Went, this, this is my reality. This is who this guy is. And so it, at that point, it became easy, you yeah. know, it, but it was fun to live there. I've Does often, it scare you that you'll get off stage and stab somebody? What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> off stage? Oh, you mean when I'm doing stand up? No, no, I mean offset. Offset? No, no, it, it's. You just turn it off. Turn it off, yeah. Turn it on when you go in. Yeah. And then off. That's Here, what the fun. The why don't we try it? Why don't you um, turn on uh, your. Not being scary? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
let's do a scene. You're a nice person. Okay. And you're not mean. Oh, okay. How right. are you today? Shut up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Too real, too soon. <laughs> Someone get the summer's eve. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shut up, she says immediately. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> He's looking over at your face. <laughs> Very frightened. Like truck stop frightened. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have uh, children? No. Really? Yeah. Are you happy? Uh, I'm mixed. I, I've always, um, I've always uh, imagined a child, and uh, I've always. I said to someone the other day, the one thing I've never had in my life, which I'd love to experience, is my own child running up to me and throwing their arms around me and saying, I love you, daddy. You know, like that. There's other stuff you haven't had. A black legless woman saying that you're her daddy or her mommy. Right, but that won't mean anything to me. Oh, okay, gotcha. The, the, (laughs) the, the, The prospect of a child... You know, exuding that yeah. unconditional love and and something that I manufactured that I made uh-huh. with a partner and just uh, that that's something I still have a shot at it. It's, I'm not out of the woods yet, but do you have a young bride? I don't. I'm. I don't have anybody at the moment. Wow, you got to go fishing in the. I know in the mill ponds and the minnow ponds. And I the, know and the puddles. I know the tadpoles. You got to yeah. fuck a tadpole. You got to put your rod in the water. Yeah, I know. I, that, you know, I'm always, I always get the feelers out, but I just, you know, mm. uh, my problem is my sperm cells are the size of tadpoles. And right. so, oh, right, wow. Yeah, when it comes Those out. Large balls. Oh, dude, my balls are about seven pounds each. And I mean, the tadpoles come out. I have to put lily pads on my <laughs> sexual yeah. partner. So when the tadpoles come out, they have a place to rest before they go into douche town. Oh, they got to take a nap because they're just got to get their their surroundings. Oh yeah, Yeah, they got to acclimate. They're they're tadpoles. (laughs) Sometimes if they stay too long, they sprout legs. Yeah. Then they hop right up. (laughs) Right. God. Yeah. That's a huge issue. (laughs) Yeah. So, do you have kids? You want them? I don't. I have a dog. That's yeah, but that's. I think it might be the same. No. I think it might no. be similar. I don't think so. I see I've people, had dogs. I see them play yeah. with their kids at the park, and it's the same as me. Well, sa- we sound the same. Yeah. You don't share chemicals yeah. with the dog. I when you like have I a do. child, there's like a chemical change forever. If yeah. I love my dog this much, if if I had a kid and it's more, then I have to do that. That's how I feel. I think of- a kid would, yeah, I think it's just organic. You would feel more love for that kid more than anything mm-hmm. yeah ever because you made it you made that the idea of saying i never want kids really scares me the idea of saying i do want kids doesn't scare me yeah and it used to be the other way around do you know answer. what i mean it feels yeah. mm. it felt confining for a while to say i wanted kids and now it feels reversed well i say you get some lily pads because uh yeah. oh yeah get load some, up yeah. well i'm also yeah. load her up with some tadpoles the there is, arlen yeah. Yeah. We what might be say? a perfect mix because I am a barren wasteland. I'm pretty. I've had a lot of tadpoles blown up that river, and let really? tell you what, nothing sticks, my guy. Have you tried? No, you I haven't tried. Well, well, I'm not. They all trying, turn into but... mosquitoes. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, they all turn into... down in that swamp. Yeah. Wow. You should get a, a tattoo of a a bug light over your. <laughs> That's a great idea. Vagina. Turn to yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bug light, one of those purple ones. <laughs> That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Do you ever have sex outdoors? Do you ever do you yes. like public sex? Yeah. I had an experience. I This blew my mind. I, I'm in New York here, and I found a lady friend. We snuck up into the um, Statue of Liberty, and we had sex in her mouth. <laughs> like, I laid her head on a mole, on a wisdom tooth, actually, because I like smart women. And while I was what? achieving, I'm looking out Lady <laughs> Liberty's eye, achieving. and I feel like a giant just orgasming all over the whole city. It was, like Paci- the- it was like Pacific Rim job. It yeah, was you crazy. talked about this on uh, your mom's house podcast, right? I did? Yeah. I don't know. I think this is the first time I've ever told anyone this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom's house. Yeah. What is... With Tom Segura? 
and Christina P. Why are you pointing at Oh, me? okay. Remember, didn't I see you there? Yeah. Did yeah. I talk about this? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's not a gullible thing. Huh? That's not a gullible thing to... Con- oh, you want me to be convinced that he really did it? Did you do it? Did you have sex in the Statue of Liberty's mouth? Well, you can go up there. Yeah, did I you did. you have sex up there? I did. On yeah. a wisdom tooth. Well, I laid her head on the wisdom tooth. You and then oh. and then I looked out no, Lady she Liberty's have those. eye. You're lying now. As we stood on her tongue, and I looked out no, her eye. No, she doesn't have a tongue. She does. Have you been up there? Yeah. No. Oh. Better get up there. Start pounding. All right. But I have to go on the tongue. I have to do yeah. exactly what you did. Yeah. You could put his head on the wisdom tooth because he's probably going to be a dummy. Yeah. Yeah. I want him to go on the canine. Yeah. Oh, that'd be why? Because you only date dogs. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll I'll put it's the only teeth I won't brush. Like I'll purposely eat a steak and get grizzled jammed between my wisdom teeth, and I'm like, "You're so smart, you get it out, right?" (laughs) Like I'll brush the other teeth. Yeah. But I'll make the wisdom teeth prove their brain power. You know what's sad? We're my dog father's face. What? Because he had three strokes. He looks like a melted wax figure at Madame Fussade's. Is that what you're asking me? Or was it something else? Are you allowed to have strokes if you're a canoe instructor, by the way? I'm just asking. Are you allowed? Can you imagine having a stroke while you're stroking? What are you doing? Wow, Newton from Hercules. I have to lay down. <laughs> you can play this harmonica. Oh, wow. Bob Dylan. <laughs> or was it something else? So... Wait. <laughs> okay, I forgot what I was saying. What do we forget what we're laughing at? <laughs> You were saying your godfather's face. And then, melted wax. And then slowly <laughs> asking me if that's what I was talking about, if it was something else. Oh, okay. I was just <laughs> guessing. Shot in the dark. I was going to say it's sad that we don't keep our wisdom teeth anymore. We get them tugged out because we become a stupid species. Did you know that? No. Yeah. The and smaller your brain is, the fa- they have to take your wisdom teeth out. Did you have them pulled? No, mine are still in there. Huge. Did you? Uh-huh. <laughs> you did? <laughs> uh-huh. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you still have them, you would say, oh, yes, I absolutely uh, did. Yeah. Yes, they're still in there. Yeah. yeah, mine fit. Wow. Got to keep them. What about you? No, I that's don't... an old wives' tale. What? It's true. The dumber you are, that's why they're called wisdom teeth. Nuh-uh. Because if they fit in your head, you, you have think a you're going to make me the gullible one now. Oh, that's the truth. Google it. Nuh-uh. No, don't. Bet. I knew you were going to bet. No, I don't want to bet. Oh, you're betting. I'm making it up. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think a bigger head means a smarter person. And you have like a tiny head. Oh, Whoa. Winky, dinky oh, little. Wow. Oh, that. Oh, sure. Look at that. Yeah. How dare you? Talk about lean over. <laughs> you. Oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, over easy. <laughs> over hard to make that connection. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, I'm really, we're really glad you're here. Yeah, man. This is a blast. You mm-hmm. like this pod? It's kind of weird. I love it. I love talking to you guys. We, we- never know what's going to happen down here. We don't have any windows and the oxygen starts to feel a bit thin. Oh, like a root cellar? Yeah. I know you were, were right in my wheelhouse because my dad, well, my parents used to put me in a root cellar when I was a kid to keep you good when you were. Well, when bad. I get in trouble, yeah, we had one of those houses like a, like a country house where you had a root cellar, and uh, my parents used to put me down there and make me play with gourds. Do you know what gourds are? Yes, They're like pumpkins with herpes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd have to have to go go down in the root cellar and I'd have to play with gourds for about two hours and then you know get. Whatever, and then they'd let me back up. Maybe it's not good that you have kids. Maybe this is a bl- God's blessing. Well, that was them, not me. I would. He never didn't choose a- to play with the gourd. I didn't well, want to go down in the root cellar and play with. How the do you gourds. play with a gourd? Would you like it? 
they're like just they're, like, they're very oddly shaped. I call them nature's butt plugs. <laughs> if you were to pull them up online, they're they're really nature's sex toys. Yes. And so as a young boy, let's just say when you play with gourds, it's maybe you could, you could rephrase and say a young prepubescent boy exploring in the root yeah. cellar. You play with gourds, you're going to explore, right? Dora the gourd explorer. <laughs> Or whatever you want to say it. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. You can, it's up to us. It's up to us. Splash it around. Do you, were you? Are you insinuating that you went down there and played with your own penis? No. Uh, no. no. Have no, you no. seen a gourd? Yes, but I've also seen your penis. When did you see it? We don't tell. What year? We don't talk about that. You've seen it? Yeah. Twice. What was it like? Wow, Describe what is it, it to like? us. I want to know. Dora, Dora the Gourd Explorer. Wow. What do girls think of my weenus? What do they think of his hog? Yeah. I just told you. What? It's a gourd in a root cellar. Wow. <laughs> and only little boys play with it. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> easy, Nacho. <laughs> Dial it back and shut the drive through window. Have you been in window. a movie <laughs> Wow. By the way, uh, that's another public place I've done it in, drive through windows. Really? Oh, my God. So about three weeks ago, I'm at an Arby's. It's one of these 24-hour ones. It's like me and the little lady friend or a little rambunctious. There's this moment you order your food. You know, uh-huh. you're like, rah, 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 rah. you Normal pull five. up. Mm-hmm. They slide the thing open. There's that moment when they turn to go and retrieve your order. Mm-hmm. It's only about some, they can, we've timed it. It's about a 30 to maybe 45 second window of opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so what we do is we slap her in there, like stick oh, her, in it. stick the front of her through. In the so window. her rumpus is hanging out. You do it doggy style. Uh-huh. Uh, you got to aim up kind of. Well, you're standing, you, you stand on your driver's seat. <laughs> she's there. Where's your head? <laughs> you're out the window. You're, you're, you're Where's she? through the sunroof. She's through the oh, drive through window. You got two windows. You're out one. She's out the other. She's, she's got the front of her body in the, in the drive through window. window. Her rumpus is sticking out. Yes. You got your driver's door open. You're standing on the edge of your driver's seat. You're doing it. And just, just just as as fun as this sounds, I accidentally we used the it was Arby's. We used the uh, horsey sauce as lubricant. Yeah. <laughs> Holy stingray mansion! Yeah. If that's even a place. <laughs> wow! Just don't make that mistake. And those curly fries too, by the way, they fit right in the eye of the cyclops, the bald cyclops. I had a thing coming out of the hole in the, and it looked like I had a, like a horn, like an overgrown cow horn. Oh, your penis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like that. It was like (laughs) sticking right out and curling back. Like if a penis could skate, (laughs) that was the one. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get in trouble at the Arby's? No, because you got that window right. And by the time time they turn around, here's your order. You're back in. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're sweating. You're I bet Arby's wasn't the only one that had the meats. Well, hello, Dr. Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Wow. By the way, someone told me once that when a woman has a bath, uh-huh. she's just drowning a roast beef sandwich. That's that, true. Yeah. That what? A, well, if you have don't you ever drown heard it, that phrase? You have Never. to drown it once a week or it'll come and yeah. get you. Yeah. Like when, when a woman's in a bath, this area is underwater. Yes. Someone once said it's like that's a, the drowning a roast beef or a corned beef sandwich. Corn. Yeah. In my case. Well, Your ring case. the bell. I'm hungry for dinner. You are? Uh-huh. Whoa. Draw the bath. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Draw the bath. Wow. Playing the corners game head. I'm going to wow. eat Wow. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Stop wasting money eating takeout and start using HelloFresh. Make restaurant. <coughs> uh. Hot B and E and HelloFresh May twenty seventh. Sla- Our birthday Which is one? May twenty eighth. What are we doing for your birthday? What is that? Gonna <laughs> sneeze. <laughs> I hope whatever you have to do knocks a piece of food loose in your tooth. Where is it? It looks like you're growing a colony of broccoli. Move. Leave my broccoli. I can't. Hang on. Make restaurant. Oh, God. There's other stuff in there, too.
Make speaking of teeth, you want food in your teeth? Make qu restaurant quality meals in your teeth at home with HelloFresh. Over forty five recipes to choose from every single week. You ever put food in your teeth and it gets bad? All leaves of the in shopping there. and most of the prep work is already done for you. Some of it you have to do, like sprinkle crack. the cinnamon, crack the cocaine, open your box, <laughs> crack the box when it arrives to get cooking. What meth, would you do if you showed up at a meth. guy's house and he cooked you HelloFresh? I would be disgusted. Did delighted. delighted. It'd make me want to puke how no one had done that for me before. I think they were very masculine. masculine. Strong. Strong. Not a pussy. For extra, extra busy, busy nights, nights check, check out their, their ready in 20, 20 recipes, recipes to get, get dinner on the table in just 20 minutes. minutes. My favorite meal is Grits and Razors. I, I like said it backwards. Grits and the Razors. Yeah. Yeah. If you play that forward, and you'll find out the meal I like. I Fresh did like the chicken curry. It's really? very good. Yes. Do you want some? I'll give. I'll cook some for you. Too. <laughs> All right. Look. Just use HelloFresh as a deal for being in with Jordan listeners. <laughs> Go to HelloFresh.com slash Ska Sweets <laughs> for free dessert for life. Oh wow! <laughs> One dessert oh, item. Here. Oh, God, you got your fucking tooth cheesecake on me. One dessert item per box while subscriptions are active. Jesus Christ. <laughs> get a whole can of cottage cheese in that drawer you got between your teeth. My God almighty. Goodbye. Enjoy the show. Every time Ian poops on the toilet, he drowns his own testicles. Oh, you got hangers? Yeah. You got hangers. Wow. You got a heavy sack. Pal. Really? Mm -hmm. You ever flush and they get stuck and get, you almost get sucked in? I got to call the super. Wow. Superintendent's got to come. You wow. snake them out. Oh, my God. You could wash your balls by dipping and flushing, I realize now. Yeah. It's a good move. Yeah, that's true. You Come ever, on, I go ever, try. You ever, Whoa, there he goes. You ever poop in April a toilet Fools. and then you flushed, but you kind of are secretly, you know how sometimes the water splashes back? Are you ever sometimes secretly wishing it does kind of splash so that you have some water to wipe your butthole with? Ooh. I don't know about that. Me neither. That's, that's more <laughs> I, your territory. I, I, don't, I don't. I do wish. Do you? I do wish. Really? I do wish. Yeah. It's like a bidet. Yeah. Sometimes I'll waddle over to the sink, put it on the paper towel, and then oh, pat wow. myself. Wow. Do you pat or do you pull? What do you do? A little bit of both. Yeah. Whoa. I basically solder. Oh. I grind like a like a like a like a you know Dewalt Dremel. Oh, well, how do you know tools? I was a contractor. You were? Mm -hmm. How many have you killed? <laughs> you don't want to know, buddy. Contract killer. Well, do you know much him. about carpentry? Yeah, Dewalt and Black and Decker, and yeah, Black and Decker. We used to call that the homeowner special. Really? Why? Ryobi's because the... it's uh like a cheap tool that homeowners get. Oh, it is. They're not. Yeah, I used good. to be a carpenter too. Oh wow! The best. She one had is her own business though. Milwaukee Makita are my top right Makita, now. Makita, yeah. I like DeWalt. What the about Husqvarna? Huh? Husqvarna? Do you like them? No. No. Who are them? That's like a Swedish. They they do. I chainsaws. thought that was a oh, combo. Like best tool. Husker Du and Nirvana. No. Remember no. Husker Husqvarna is uh, like a Norwegian. Like uh, they do chainsaws Ooh. and stuff. What'd you guys build? That's fascinating. I built houses. I did remodeling. Oh, I also like did remodeling. Bathrooms. She could like frame out a house. I could do that wow. if I was like a helper. Although but... you should have seen me tackling a dresser the other day from West Elm. The problem is if you know carpentry, you fuck those things up because you refuse to follow the directions and then you end up fucking them up. You did? I didn't. It was fine, but I... I had somebody else there being like, no, that pay. And I was like, please leave me alone. And I, I would have fucked it up. If I had wow. I'm impressed. That's, that's like cool. My mom is a contractor and my dad was too. Wow. Yeah. It's how, how long did you do it for? Long enough to end up like this. Yeah. 15 years, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. It was fun. I miss it. Now my yeah. hands are soft and I feel like a pussy. We should build something together. We could. I, and now I'm back. Don't you think that'd be fun? Yeah. I miss it. Fucking tool belt here, know, the yeah. nails here, hammer, yeah, 16 yeah. inches on center. You measure it with the hammer. I suck now, though. You do have to. It is Me not too. like riding a bike. And the TV is well cool. Listen, you didn't have a level. Whose fault was that? 
I didn't have a level. I try to be on the level. I think it looks great. I think it looks good. Oh, too. she put your TV up crooked. Yeah, it's do you see? Tiny bit. Oh, it it's is. not Arlen. It's not crooked if you go like this. Yeah, you turn yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah. You I just gotta, it. you just gotta look at it like a dog that yes. I will a say, question. building a house yeah. is way easier than mounting a TV. One hundred percent. Building a right? house, yeah. you just th- you pour a foundation. That's your foundation. Yeah. Then you have the square. You you put the you put the posts up. You put it all together, and it's Ooh. your guy. It's like you know? you're just. It's like this you're describing a marriage. This is somebody you else's guy. Build the foundation. Guy. Yeah. You put the posts up. Yeah. You keep it square. If it's not square, you smack it in the side of the face a bunch with a hammer until it Whoa. cooks. Make it go center. <laughs> Did you like like actually build homes from the ground up, mm-hmm. like the whole thing? Yeah. Well, she used wow. to build them from the top down. Oh, then she wow. got in trouble with that's OSHA. Right. Wow. That's what a woman builder does. Wow. Mm-hmm. Back, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. I the only thing I don't can't do is like furniture cabinets. Okay. Or like I don't wire wire a house or plumb. You just do the framing. The like framing, the, the drywall, the roofing. Wow. The, I love drywall. The Wasn't drywall great? I hate it. Drywall. I love it. Drywall Mudding it up. Oh, my God. Source. Sanding it. It's just yeah. like meditative. It's so tedious. Shoo, feathering it out form, with man. a 12-inch blade. Oh, my God. Doing a perfect circle. Oh! When do you need a circle? Whenever. I like parging, which is where you, like, basically stucco a house with concrete. That's good. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Rubbing that on there. You know yeah. who like parging? The three bears. Parging. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> mm, I got it. Yeah. Where nice. do you live? Uh, I live in Los Angeles. What part? Uh, I live exact in, address. Uh, 8625 Melrose Boulevard, right over at KFC. Really? on the roof, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I smell great. <laughs> Illegal <laughs> Yeah. to live there. No, no. Legal? Legal. I've wow. worked something out with the owner. Nice. I work a shift and... That's great. At the yeah. KFC, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you get discounts on buckets of chicken? I don't eat the chicken. I just eat the skin. And I don't <laughs> think anyone eats the, the chicken. Uh-huh. I think of it. I think when it's you, all skin. Yeah, you bite a thing of chicken. You just it rip the skin off like a hyena on the Discovery Channel, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You just leave the meat. Yeah. So I just, I just order buckets of skin now. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Efficient. Save a chicken. Yeah. Eat the skin. Eat that <gasps> skin. That's a shirt. That's a bumper sticker. Yeah. What about rotisserie chicken skin? What are we? Doing? That's good that's too. Good. Ooh, yeah. what yeah. about chicken nugget skin? Oh, that's, Ew, oh yeah. come on! You're poor. That's, Don't judge you're a me. Poor person. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're riddled with poverty. I can't help <laughs> it. Chicken I make t- bad financial decisions. Oh, oh, There's somebody named Ian Finance. <laughs> it's Fi Dance. Oh, 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 the D stands for. <laughs> Don't call me finance. Don't call me finance. <laughs> I don't love the uh, chicken McNuggets. Or they're, they're, I'm very suspect of what the boot shaped nugget. Yeah, yeah, just the meat. Like I, I get it that it's meat, it, but it's it looks like a sponge. It, yeah, sometimes it has bubbles in oh, it. Yeah, but it's good. delicious. It, yeah, every now and then I'll, I, I got to be honest, I'll eat it maybe once every ten years. I'll have chicken yeah. McNuggets. It's I'll rare. treat myself to a. I love a McDonald's. Hamburger, yeah. McDonald's cheeseburger, yeah. Double cheeseburger, Mm-mm. yeah. I'll go to Chipotle. That's the for the the closest yeah. I'll get to fast food. I can't do it. Oh, how come? I don't know. I just grew up in a very hippie, eat three almonds a week kind of town. Oh no way. Although no, I had a lot of. I had a dad that was white trash and a mom that was hippie. The dad would would let me eat Happy Meals, but I got type two diabetes as a young girl. You still have Big it? Fat. No, got rid of it. You can get rid of it if you stop eating for two years. But you have to really not eat. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah, wow. You really have to. Lowers be- your blood sugar and everything? I don't know. I just went anorexic in high school and then I just didn't have type 2 diabetes and everybody was like, amazing. And I was like, my eyes were falling out. And then they were like, we're proud of you. <laughs> I had the scare of my life with a diabetes guy once. What happened? I I love cactus. Uh-huh. Eating it or touching it? Like like planting it and, and having gardens. I have cactus all around my home. I love Whoa, I love cactus. That's cool. Uh-huh. And so there's a place out near Joshua Tree. Yes. Um, in California. And they had a cactus ranch, a cactus farm. It's huge. It was like a giant place. And you could go and select your own cactus they had just about every type of cactus you can imagine what a dream yeah so i, I would go out with my pickup truck i'd pick up like 10 20 30 cactus bring them home and plant them and um, one year i went out in my I a dodge pickup truck ram 
And there's a thing called a, uh, what's it called? It's called a golden, golden something. It's sort of the, those short round cactuses. They look like, like, like balls almost. Mm -hmm. Golden barrel, they're called. Golden mm. barrel cactus. They're beautiful. And I go out to this place in my truck. It's about two and a half hours from LA in the middle of nowhere. And I pull in and it's this huge place. There's no one else there but me. It's in the morning. And the guy comes walking out who works as a little office building. And this guy comes walking out and he sort of looks like Charles Manson. He was a beard, sort of hippie-ish. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, dude, I want to pick up some cactus. And, you know, I walk around for like half an hour and then I find what I want. I go get them. I say, hey, I found these golden barrels. They're about this big, roundish. He had a whole pile of them. And I said, I said, hey, I'll take them all. So we get a little cart. And uh, he goes, okay, let's count them. I go, okay. So, you know, one, you know, they're mm -hmm. not easy to pick up because they're also, it's like one, two, three, keep going, 17, 18. Great. I said, hey, great, let's go take 18. them out to the truck. You know, there's still no one there. The only one there, this guy. And uh, we pull down the back door, getting ready to load. He goes, uh, we better count them. Uh -oh. And I go, well, we just count them. There's 18. He goes, you got to count them. And I go, okay, just to make sure. Uh -huh. One, <laughs> two, three, close the hatch. And uh, I go, okay, can we go pay for him? He goes, well, we got to count them. Oh, no. And I go, dude, like we can't. And so he gets in the truck. He counts them again. One, two, three. And I go, okay, let's go in the thing. Climbs off the truck. And he goes, we got to count them. Oh, no. And I'm just going, and then he, I, I, I start getting mad. I'm the only one there. I'm saying, dude, we've counted them three times. Like, there's 18. Like, let's go. And he just goes like this. He just goes to me. And I'm like, what the? And then he just starts, like, doing it. And I'm thinking, holy shit, the guy's, like, on, a like, an acid trip yeah. or heroin uh -huh. or something. There's still no one around. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I, like, now I'm mad, but I'm getting, like, freaked out like because he looks like manson and we're out in the middle and i go dude what are you are you okay dude and he, he just starts like going like this and he starts to collapse and i grab him but as he's oh. about to hit the ground so right. now i'm holding this guy who's in a diabetic seizure no, yeah I, coma. I, I, I drag him to the to the office and and i'm a, I, I put him in a chair and now he's out he's just like 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 this and i'm like i didn't know what was happening and i, I gotta call nine one one. I see the phone on the counter. I just, as I'm, <laughs> as I'm about to pick it up, it rings. And I wanted to clear the line. So I, I just went, hello. And the, this lady goes, who's this? And I go, I'm a customer. I'm here. I'm trying to call 911. She goes, where's Donnie? And I go, who's that? She goes, that's my son. He works there. I said, you're his mother. She goes, yeah. And, and, and he goes, I go, he's, he's passed out. I think he's dying. I think he's had a heart attack or something. She goes, no, no, no. He's a diabetic. There's an orange crush in the in the cooler. Feed it to him. Whoa. So now I'm like, I'm like, my heart's racing. At first I thought he was a heroin guy. Yeah. Then I thought he was Manson. Then I thought, and you know, 18 this, 18 that. So I get the orange crush. I literally have to push his head back, like pour it down and sort yeah. of about three quarters of the way through through. He starts responding. And so I'm just sort of pouring. And bottle it. feeding it like yeah. a baby? Like a baby, wow. but it was a can. And then he starts. And this, this is, I'm not even making this up. He like, he goes like this. He, he like sort of collapses. He goes like this. He goes. <laughs> so that's 18 then. No way. <laughs> I just went, dude. No way. I'm not even lying. <laughs> After all that, I'm having a heart attack. Oh my that God. That was the first thing out of his mouth. I wanted to kill him. Oh my God, that's how committed the laborer is to their jobs. They yeah. just do something so much that even in death, they're like, we must get the profit from the thing and put the things in that's the things. That's what he said. Christ. And Whoa. I just stared. I went, no. And then. <laughs> you said no. <laughs> and then the ambulance came and I said, yeah, this guy. And they go, yeah, he does it every three weeks. And they were mad. They're like, we hate this guy. Whoa. And I was like, <laughs> and I just, I, I, I literally went through this like, cavalcade of emotions you should have said no 10 and then you would have gotten <laughs> yeah, eight for free right. i should have i i was i i met a guy and he was i was very attracted to him we ended up dating for two years but we came back to my room and i was like and he was like god my head hurts and i felt his head and i was like oh there's like a fucking huge lump on your head Whoa. let's put ice on it 
And then we would like, he was like, you know, fuck that. And we like would start hooking up. And then he would be like, I would see him kind of look at me and be like, oh, I think I left the kiln on because he was a ceramic guy. He'd be like, I think I left the kiln on. I have to check it. And I kind of look, he would like look around and I was like, okay. And then he would go to, he would go to leave, come back two seconds later and be like, hey, what's up? And the same thing kept happening. So fu- like every seven minutes he kept being like, I think I left the kiln on. And he would look confused, leave the door, come back. And then finally I was like, hey, do you have, cause I knew, cause he had this like Sharpie. He was doing something with a Sharpie at some point. And so I was like, can I use your Sharpie? And I took it from him. And then he did the cycle again. And I was like, hey, can I use your Sharpie? And he was like, oh yeah. And, and I was like, oh, you like have, like an amnesia thing. Cause I thought he was fucking with me. But oh, then when I saw him organically creepy. go for the, and it was, he had gotten into a fight and gotten his head run into the ground and was having a concussion. <laughs> and he was like every seven minutes having a so you had concussion sex. I had concussions. I felt bad. I was like, times? I think I raped you. Every seven Dude, minutes? it was like nine <laughs> times. Because wow. he kept getting horny. Like, yeah. he kept being like, oh, you were I forgetting that he You came? were part of the pattern. I was yeah. part of the pattern. He kept being like, let's fuck. And I'd be like, wow. oh, my God, okay. You must oh, have the your life. It was insane. Looks like I'm turning wow. on your kiln. And then when wow. I found out he had a concussion, I, like, the next day I was like, I'm really sorry. And he was like, it's totally fine. I will have sex with you again. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, wow. I was very worried that he was going to be like, who the oh fuck? My God. Right yeah. in the Patrick Swayze. I know. Wow. He Patricked all over my Swayze. He wow. ghosted you. And then he was a ghost because he didn't call you back. Did he? No, but people did call us ghost for a long time because of that movie because he was a ceramicist. Yeah. Wow. I saw a guy. I, I was a kid at the beach. Oh. I was with my dad and this guy was doing flips and then like doing backflips and cartwheels. And I go, Dad, look, that guy's doing gymnastics. And he'd do a flip and then he'd lay on the ground like this and get up and do a flip. Oh, whoa, whoa. And my dad ran up and gave him put coke in his mouth, like you said, oh, wow. with the orange crush, and the guy came back. Did he say 18? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why was he doing flips? Because it was his body was convulsive, yeah. like you were saying. Oh, scary, right? Yeah. I had it looked never like had he was any possessed by a demon. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also, I dated a different guy who saw a guy driving like this, and his uh, his head was looking up. Oh, that's so scary. And he so looked scary. over and he was like, oh my God, that's the scariest thing I've ever seen. And then the car swerved and went up and crashed and he ran over and the guy was having a grand Whoa. mall seizure or something. Not Whoa. a grand, not, not that one, but the A grand one. what? A grand ma the, seizure. The he was going ma- home to make soup. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> a grand mall seizure? Is that what they call it? a grand mall No, that's seizure. the one that kills you. He was having the other one. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It's so scary to see somebody yeah. driving looking up with their. That's so scary. Oh yeah, it's, it seems like it's out of a horror movie. I know. Yeah, yeah. It was him and Duncan saw it. It was crazy. Yeah, and they talked about it forever. And I was like, I don't want to hear about this anymore. It's really scary that your body can just get yeah. fucked up. But what happens when you're diabetic? You go into shock because you don't have enough sugar. Your blood sugar's low. Why is type two diabetes the opposite, where you can't break down sugar? I wish I knew. It's really weird. God, I wish I knew. Was that guy skinny or fat? He was just average, probably wow. like your build, like like handsome, handsome, like just same <laughs> huge same height, maybe <laughs> same same like same dimensions, but mm. that's so scary. Yeah. Oh yeah, my my cousin was going for a run. He was running a marathon or something, and my mom met him at the end. This was like fairly recently. Did he shoot himself? And no, he was oh. going. He was like, ah, well, and then we had some. And mom was like, whoa, oh. you're like tired. And he was like, I've said them, but and then he passed out. He had a tumor this big. In his freaking head. Oh. Oh. Got it taken out. Now he talks kind of loud. There's a famous um, video on YouTube of an L.A. like Weather uh, lady, right? Weather la- or just yeah. a, a news lady. Yeah. And she's on location at like in Dodgers. Frommel, frim, frommel, yeah, frommel. she just loses it and yeah. starts like talking in tongues and she's yeah. having a like a stroke or something. But you it's can really tell she's scary. scared. Yeah. Oh, Dude, yeah. It's scary. Years ago when I was a carpenter at... Uh, in the morning, we saw a slug in the ground, and we were talking about eating it. And oh, my buddy was yeah, like, "I'll right. give you, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you eat that slug." This is Ooh. so fucked up. You're and so I was fucked like, up. All right, you'll so do I anything for money. And I bit it, oh. and I threw the other half out, and then I just spit it out. Right, and exactly twenty four hours later, I was, uh, we were remodeling a, a bathroom, and I was right by the. Um, basement stairs and i just remember i was talking in gibberish and i was like 
and I just fell. And thank God I fell into the door frame and not down the door stairs. Oh. Passed out, woke up in an ambulance, and I'm like, oh, I, uh, I've just been working hard lately. I think I'm exhausted. And then my coworker told them I bit a slug, and they were like, you could add a parasitic thing that slugs oh. are, uh, they can kill you. Yeah. I don't know the term. There's a story no of a defense. kid that, that did that, like, recently and died. Like a really? Young, yes. Like a teenager. Yeah, yeah, thank God I spit it out. Because yeah. if I swallowed it to be like, you owe me a hundred bucks, it would have fucking yeah. killed me. Some kid did Good it on a go, dare though. not too long ago, and it killed him. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Shout yeah. out, Brian Fouracre. I still don't think you gave me that money. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was going to ask, is if you got your money, because that's a $500 ride in the ambulance. I know. We didn't have Uber back then. I got into a, a, an Uber... My friend walked up to me, blood pouring out of his mouth. He uh, said, I need an ambulance. I said, that's crazy. It's too much money. Because I, whatever. I'm an idiot. I call what? a ca cab. Jake Fromm, shout out. Got, oh, call I the remember cab. this. We get in the cab, blood pouring out of his mouth. Get to the hospital. They're like. "Guess." Oh, let him guess what he had. Blood pouring out of his mouth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something he ingested, obviously? No. Oh. Uh, old school. Old school. Long time ago thing. Ye old. Scurvy? Close. Close. Ricketts. Nope. Almost. Try again. Polio? You Close. are. Hay when you fever. say, I'll say. Close. Ta da. Ta da. Tuberculosis. Tu oh, yeah. Oh, wow. T tuberculosis. Yeah. And then I got there and they immediately were like, was anybody around him when he had the blood in his mouth? And I was like, I just rode in a cab with him. And they were oh. like, quarantine. You're like that Hasidic family that rode with the other Hasidic guy that had COVID in New Rochelle. Oh. The first case in New York. Yeah. Creepy, man. So what you get for being a good friend. Yeah, right? Never ride in a car with Let anyone. Die. But Let now him. if Let somebody with tuberculosis yeah. comes near me, I get it really quick. Oh, well, no. good thing you're not going to be in well, the anytime a homeless middle guy ages. Comes up to me. Well, no, a lot of homeless people in New York have it. <gasps> really? Yeah, a lot of them. That, when you hear them, <laughs> got to get away. You got to get out. Oh. <laughs> you know, when you hear them do that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you say lucky she's not going to be in the Middle Ages? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. I would do so well in the Middle Ages because I'm very. Wow. How old are you now? You're already Middle Ages. <laughs> oh, way to go. You're already Middle Ages. Wait, no. If what? you're unhygienic yeah, back you're then. You're older than me. You would so die. are you. <laughs> yeah. You're old, you old bitch. Whoa, power drop. <laughs> wow. Did this work? Wait, if you were in the Middle Ages, being unhygienic would kill you, right? No, they like, just, couldn't you die from poor hygiene? People yeah. always say they don't want to go back to the Middle Ages because it's they poop in the, their pants and stuff. Because it's gross and dirty. Huh? Why would they poop on their pants just because it's the Middle Ages? <laughs> yeah. It was a different time. They, they weren't all hit in the head. The no, no, no. That's they were why they wore those big, like those big dresses. Curly shoes. No, big dresses so that you could poop right in there. Oh. Yeah. I just found out the pocket was invented in the 1600s. What? Can you why? believe it? Dude. They were going around for centuries upon millennium, just no pockets. I'm going to carry a, all my stuff. There's a comic what? who has a bit about about his grandfather invented, invented the belt that went around books. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And he has a great joke about it, about like, why is, why, like his people are like, oh, he's smart. And I'm like, no, the bag is smart. The belt is the dumbest shit ever. But I forget who that was. You don't know who that is? I think. You like the tuberculosis. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a tuberculosis talk. That was what day. that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think a comic ever did a joke. They did. About that. They did. No. But the belt bag, That's... the bag was invented very late. The belt much, bag and the bag belt. Much later than yeah. the pocket. But the belt was invented the before bag, the bag. The bag yeah. should have been around as the, the pocket was But the bag was before That's the pocket. Argument. The pocket was after the belt. No. The before the belt. Pocket. Below the belt. That's rude. <laughs> Try and keep the gloves up. Jim Gary. So glad you could be here. Oh, man. are you kidding? Shrank I think I food. ate a little bit too much of the whipped cream upstairs. Oh, do you feel sick? Just, yeah, I just, you know. Did you enjoy the chocolate Dude, milk? Dude, I loved it. Yeah? It was amazing. You're not Did just you make it? That... Uh-huh. Dude, it was delicious. Thank really? you. I yeah. went, I so I asked if Harlan liked coffee, and he said, no, but I like chocolate milk. 
No if, hot chocolate. No hot chocolate. Yeah. If anybody's still into that sort of thing. Yeah. Or if that's even allowed anymore. So yeah. he said, and I go, I'll make it happen. So I went to a deli. And they're and like, no. The most important part is that it, you put it in a Christmas. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas. A Christmas perfect, cup. Did you buy that cup today? No, 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 no. I've had that. I love it. Dude. But I went really? and the one deli, the one bodega didn't have it. So I went up to another and I found the mix. Oh, and then I got dude. the milk. Wait a minute. And I was so excited. Here's a Thank question. You. you did a great job. Oh, thanks. Freddie got fingered. Yeah. Did that take place in Ithaca? Ithaca, New York? Yes. No. We shot that in Vancouver, Canada. But the college was called Ithaca College. It was? Ithaca University. That's road trip. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got and it. That one I don't know. You're I confusing him it. with Tom Green. No, I know. I was in Freddie Got Fingered. I thought Freddie Got Fingered was the... Everybody's always like, oh, Freddie Got Fingered when, we, when I say I'm from Ithaca. That's probably Road Trip then. Yeah, oh, Road they're Trip. Just, I don't they're know. making the leap from. Da, 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 I, yeah, da, da, I don't. Da, da. Know. Tom Green was in Road Trip. He was. He's the but guy that's why leading they say the college got talk. Probably, yeah. Maybe that's it. I just want to know if it takes place in Ithaca. Ithaca's like the Finger Lake area north of New York, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. where I'm from. A lot from. of violin lessons and things like that yeah. going on up there. Yes. Yeah. There are the Suzuki method. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Did Beachy, you say actually. Violin lessons. Wow. I don't know how he grabbed that so fast, to be honest with you. That's a cello, though. What idiot. the fuck? Idiot. Idiot in front of Harlan. Violin. Idiot. It is? Everybody knows oh. cello. Well, it looks a Where lot are like you a from? cello to me. Toronto. Really? Yeah. That makes so much sense. <laughs> it does? Yes. The best comics are from Toronto and the nicest people and oh, tall. Wow. Thank Always you. Always tall, wow. nice, and Thank hats you. that are your shape that you have on. No, thanks. Wow. Very that makes so much sense. Thank I you. love Toronto Comics. Graham K, Pat Bircher, Steph Tolov, three of my faves. Okay, yeah. They're great. Yeah. Nate wow. McIntosh. Nate Mac no, that's Canada. Toronto's in Canada. But he's not from Toronto. I'm saying specifically Toronto. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. No. It's Why not. is that? I used to drive from Buffalo in my shitty little truck. Because I started comedy there for three months, I would be blackout drunk, not driving, but in Buffalo, yeah. doing doing sets that I would get off stage and people would be like, "That story you told, I think, might have been rape." And I'm like, Bleh, "You Whoa. know." And then I went to Toronto to try and clean up my act a little bit. Yeah, couldn't even couldn't even cut my couldn't even cut my freaking teeth up there because everybody was so cerebral and and good at it. Yeah, it's a different it's a different uh, mindset up there. It's totally different. When I was in Toronto doing my shows and in Canada in general touring. Then I moved to LA and I had to retune my, re, re, redefine my whole act and my In whole. In what way? It, it, was, it was really amazing. Like I do jokes in Canada that would literally just tear the roof off. Yeah. And I'd bring, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I'd do the same ones in, in the US and crickets. Because they were weird. Well, they were just, I don't know what it was, but they, they were just, yeah. Were they were too maybe, literal or what? They were maybe a little more... <sighs> cerebral or a little i don't know i really but they were like the sensibility the was nose. just different mm. and in canada it was like boom instant and then in the states it was like just a different sensibility so i i really had to make some adjustments and fine tuning still keeping it true to what i do but yeah. i had to i spent a good year my first year kind of trying to figure it out like it was a real labyrinth of of finding material and tone and and sensibility and huh. making it all it was it was a real repackaging thing when i when i first got there and did some of my early jokes i just went i thought it was going to fail because i couldn't believe yeah that these killer jokes were, were were getting like next to nothing did they make their way back around or was it that no no they never was, did the jokes again no they just i, I had to cut them loose do you like them better like I love them because what when they worked, they worked yeah. where they were, but where is it know. alty? Is it like more alt humor? <clears throat> no, it was real simple jokes. Like I, I, I remember one of them. My favorite. It would destroy in Ken. It's like uh, I went to the store the other day. I stole a a Snickers bar. I went home, called Crime Stoppers. I made a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, like it was real simple. Oh, like because America yeah, yeah. loves somebody being like, 
I actually stole a Snickers bar. Here's exactly how the day went I down. Yes, but you know what I mean. There's yeah. no like you have to really say what's going on, or else yeah. Unless the alt, you're in the alt scene, but there is like a real <sighs> like I don't think Mitch Hedberg would work now. What? Yeah, I believe this. You are crazy. I really think what this is true. Talking about? Because the whole wave of like, oh, I guess no, Dave is still like this. But like the whole Louis wave, where it's like, this is really my life and my fucked up thoughts. Yeah. Really created. But like don't a, you think that that would make Hedberg shine? Yeah, maybe. Totally. I'm just saying that is the the American sensibility is very much like we want we want like gross reality TV. We want like mm. honest. It's not honest. It's never honest. But yeah. we want an insight into your fucked up brain. As you opposed know, to, like, see. here's a funny idea I have, which I love. Here's a funny idea I have. Yeah, I, and I, I can't explain it. it. It was just, I delivered it the same way. I Everything was the same. And I was mortified when it didn't because I thought, wow, these jokes just destroying Ken. When I come down there, it's just going to be like, yeah. and when they didn't hit, I was like. Did you ever think, like, I'm going to move back? No, it wasn't like that because I, I knew that I had enough um, of a, you know, I had enough in me that I could adjust. And it was actually quite a fun challenge because now I went, Oh, I thought it was going to come down here locked and loaded. And I realized half the chamber's empty. Mm. And now I've got a, I've got some work to do. I've got to figure this out. I've got to define what it is. And I've got to, with my own style, my own presentation, I've got to find my way and gratiate my way into this culture and this, and these people and this sensibility. Mm. So it was sort of um, fun and adventurous, but it yeah. was scary because, you know, when I moved from Canada, it's like it's one of those things you put everything in the trailer and go. Oh, yeah. Why and do Can I got in a debate recently. Why do Canadians want to move to the U.S.? Just for the opportunity. For work and well, the, opportunity, the opportunity, right? Just that there's everything. Just television more, and film, more clubs, film, touring. more clubs. Yeah, just there's just room to grow. Like, And especially in the 80s, when when me and Norm McDonald, me and Norm came up together. Really? Norm, there's the book. <sighs> and um, oh yeah, we would tour together. We were buddies and everything. No way. But um, but you, none of these comics in Toronto even had an agent to do a, a commercial for uh, toothpaste. Like right. in Canada, there was just no industry, and so the only way Why is to that? do no any, Jews. There was just. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there was Jews or less Jews in Canada for sure. I don't even know. I don't either. But it was just it was it was just there was no there was no infrastructure for you were just doing stand up to make people laugh on a weekend and that was the end of it. There was there was nowhere you could go to get representation. You could just get a little money. But not much. Yeah. Was, so you had to be like <clears throat> balls to the wall, incredibly good to then be a Canadian comic and work your way into jingles. Bingo. Wait, did, and then you packed up all your stuff. You came here. What? How old yeah. are you? I was uh, 30. No, I was 20, 20, 28. And you just packed it all up. All and you up. and Norm moved together? No, Norm moved a year ahead of me. Nice. And then I moved a year after him. And then Jim Carrey moved down when I, he moved before I even met him. Jim was gone. Jim left when he was a teenager. I think he left when he was 19. Yeah. And there's only one club in Toronto. So we all came out of that same club. And then Howie Mandel went down. So Howie and Jim were gone before me and Norm even got to meet them. Yeah. And then, wow. and then, and then we were sort of the next wave that came in and, uh, and it was still, it was a wasteland, but so that's why Howie and, and, um, Norm or uh, Jim moved down because there was no outlet for them in Canada as talented right. as Jim. And even in the local papers in Toronto, they would write about Jim. They'd go, this guy, you know, they'd do full two page stories on him and him making his faces, but there was nowhere for him to go. And so he got out and, and so that's what you did. Now there's more of a, yeah. an infrastructure up there, but it's still sort of Canadian. It's not as, it's not as massive as the U.S., but at least you can make some Canadian headway now. But yeah. it's so when he got to America, did he pop immediately? Who? or Jim Carrey? Uh pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. He he was so such an anomaly. You know, he's such a ball of energy that he he started making strides pretty quickly. Yeah. And so, then once they paved the way, it's easier for other Canadians to come because you know each other. Not really. I mean, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know Jim or Howie and, 
and they were the only really the only two that came down <laughs> excuse me and really like kind of made some noise and then so what'd you do you just moved here and hit mics or something yeah i just Whoa. moved to la and started like going up and and uh yeah it was just starting over you know really so you yeah. met like american co- you were you didn't have a pack of canadians you were just like no hi i'm brand new norm, norm was the only guy i knew like as a comic so me and him hung out all the time but in la um, in la yeah. yeah but um but norm when Norm moved down, he was sort of a bit of an entity. He was he, he was sort of on the radar. Uh-huh. I came down completely cold. Like I came down, nobody knew who I was. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, right, it was right. scary, but it was fun. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, a uh, it's a fun. I feel like I moved right at the right time because I was happy to still do open mics because I wasn't that. But yeah. I can't imagine being king in the castle and then moving to no man's land. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's I wasn't the king of the castle. I was just a working comic. I was doing well, but I just knew. But even doing well, doing well to open mics is. Yeah. Yeah. A... I, I was sort of, me and Norm were sort of at the top of the pack in Canada at the time. And mm-hmm. we could have had a career just going around the country on a treadmill like cities every year. But we both wanted more for ourselves. So we both got out and. Yeah, cool. off we went. Yeah, man. And did you stay in touch with Norm throughout? Yeah, the me years? and Norm were were really good friends. And then we had a bit of a falling, not a bit. We had a falling out and kind of didn't talk for maybe the last twenty years. Yeah. So. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So I bumped into him once or twice, like, uh, but uh, we were super tight, like really mm-hmm. close. And then something happened, and then we. Um, we just, we, you know, never any um, animosity. Always love in my heart for Norm. We were really yeah. close, really good friends. He went through cancer in the 80s. Most people don't know this, but he, he had stomach cancer in the 80s. So I was with him all the time going through that with him and right. helping him and being a friend with him. And and then um, he moved down. He healed up, moved to L.A., and then we were hanging out, being buddies for two or three years and then we kind of went our separate ways, but just, um, always loving my heart for the guy. We have great memories, great friendship. And, uh, I really miss him. Sad that he's gone and yeah, great, hilarious guy, you know? Yeah. What a hole that left. I I feel like everybody felt it when he did. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like when John Candy died when I first moved to LA, I'd only been down there. Did uh, you know those guys, the CCTV guys? I know. I know. I, I've met and done stuff with a bunch of them, but never with John. I never mm-hmm. met John because he died almost, I think, the year I moved down. Mm-hmm. And he, he was the one guy where I really he just felt it, like in Hollywood. Like it just, I think more than any other celebrity that's died, for some reason, he was just such wow. a lovable guy. You can mm. just feel it in the in the air and the community. It was amazing, but. Yeah. yeah, we had a comic pass away recently that was everybody's friend. Oh. And it was like this it was a it was like a it spread through like you would see people for a week and you mm. would just not even say hello and you would just be like, I know, and hug each other. It was like Oh, uh, who was it? Do you mind me asking? It was Kenny DeForest. Oh, I don't think he was I like knew him. he it's a Chicago comic. Oh. Chicago, Came up in LA, St. Louis. Yeah, New York. Oh. LA just moved was, back to New York. I mean, somebody said it. Somebody was like, everybody was friends with Ke- everybody was friends with Kenny, and everybody wanted to be best friends with Kenny, but nobody was best friends with Kenny. Oh. So he just was like, he was just everywhere. And then when he died, every, all of us were like, no way. Like the the feeling, it was really like, it's really beautiful though too, because you there's so much of a sense of like pie grabbing c- comedy, fighting for spots at this club, and then something like that happens, and we're just all like. Whoa! I'm so happy that you all are alive and we have each other. Yeah, like, hold it on reaffirms tight. your yeah your that existence and yeah that you're yeah. together and really like that. There's like love there as opposed to just like colleagues fighting for the same bite. Yeah, you yeah. Know? it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's sad when uh, we're joy makers. So it's sad when when comedians die. It's uh, leaves a hole. You know. Yeah. We 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 I call us door to door joy salesmen because we travel around and laughter is joy and we bring joy to people and so when a comedian dies especially one that's really well known or in the yeah. community or in, on the global stage you feel it you know 
And the whole reason why you're a comedian is because you have a unique you have a unique joy that you give. That's right. So yeah. then when that's gone, you're like, oh, I have such a specific understanding of what is missing. Yeah. Is that like person's. you mentioned Mitch Hedberg, like mm -hmm. he had such a specific type of style and, and comedy that, you know, you, you, you feel it. And, and Gilbert Gottfried and all of them, yeah. you know, every, every comic has their own style of joy, if you will. And, and, and that door closes. Uh, but that's the beauty of, you know, what we do being on film and, and recorded, we live in perpetuity that way. Yeah. So it, you can keep it coming. So there's, there's that, you know, on the other there's end a of thumbprint, it. you can always yeah. have dusted off and red. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think with the, <coughs> with AI and the digital future that we have, I think you're going to see so many, if not all of these comics, whether big or small or anyone that left a comedic footprint, I think you're going to see them have a rebirth in the hologram hologram era or you think or or brain implants or coming out of your tv oh yeah i think the future with new material wait do you mind telling that thing that you told us uh at rogan's club that you were telling him about the guy that put you into ai oh yeah whoa <laughs> yeah so well, this is an example of AI writing material for me, but yeah, do you think AI would write material for like prior, Dude, or would it just be AI reciting old prior? I think no. it'll it'll write for them. Uh huh. They did that with the guy who died, Hitchens. Yeah, Christopher Hitchens died, <coughs> and they AI made a reaction to him to some I I forget what it is some religious. Maybe it was Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And it was like an entire speech. And like his friends were being like, this sounds just like him. This well, is Will insane. Sasso on his his AI podcast. They did a whole George Carlin special in AI. Whoa. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And it, it, it was sort of wonky and off, but it was sort of there, too. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're at this precipice where AI is sort of it's it's in its infancy. It's in its, you know the fledgling years of. AI, but if it's already doing that and to, to the story you wanted me to tell, Howie Mandel's involved in sort of this hologram business where, you know, he's got... He's at airports. Yeah. In yeah. a hologram at airports. Sometimes <clears throat> in airports, How, Howie Mandel would be like, hi, everybody, I'm Howie Mandel. Yeah. That's awesome. Make sure to wash your hands on your flight. <laughs> yeah. All right. And he has this hologram at his warehouse, his studio. And I was there visiting with him recently, and he said, um, I want to introduce you to this AI robot. It was a hologram of a, a female robot. And, va va voom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about, you know, this high. And he goes, uh, yeah. Mm. And he, he walked up to it, and he goes, uh, AI, um, this is Harlan Williams. Do a comedy routine. Harlan, give the AI a topic. And I just thought, well, this is going to be stupid. It'll be like knock, knock jokes. So I just said, I don't know, potato salad. And within about 30 seconds, the AI robot just kind of clicked in and sort of in my cadence, my mannerisms, riffed off about five potato salad jokes and three of them oh, I no. would put in my act. No. Yeah. They were, they, I was like, what were they? Do you remember? Oh my God. I don't God. remember. I, I think one was kind of like potato salads, kind of like relationships. It's mushy, but it's fine. I, I don't remember, <laughs> <laughs> but it, but I was and just like, it gives like, you diarrhea. Yeah. Whoa. And I was just taken aback because I was expecting like a one out yeah. of 10 and it was a six and a half out of 10. That's fucked and I up. Went, and this is brand new. It didn't know me. It, in it calculated it in, in a matter of three seconds. It, did that scare it, you? It, it it impressed me, and it sort of it didn't scare me. I was more impressed, really, because it, it sort of found a me little too. bit of my nuance, my mm -hmm. quirkiness, my my pacing, my tone, mm -hmm. the value in my voice. And I just thought it would be like, "I'm Harlan Williams." Knock knock. Who's there? Like, and th that it captured all that, and it wrote five jokes in my quirky style right i was crazy. like what did it come off like your stand-up or like you and rocket man uh it was sort of a little bit of a mishmash that's really? what i mean it, it isn't defined perfectly right but i realized like i record all my sets on my phone i have uh -huh. about two thousand recordings of me doing stand-up whether it's a spot or a headlining right. thing or 
And I fully believe that one day someone's oh, yeah. going to take these recordings and there will be a live hologram or a robot or mm -hmm. a, a chip implant where people will be able to hear these sets and see them. and Or the, even just yeah. be able to be like, make, you know, have go into AI and be like, can you please read me the Communist Manifesto, but explain it as Ian Fidance. And it'll be like, yeah. hey, guys, I just think, you know. Like you could just have that. You could just be like, hey, hey man, man, hey man, you're gonna have to give give away here. your apartment. Yeah. Share, shave your armpits and shut this book. <laughs> Learn idiot. how to work, man. Yeah. But that's what I mean. I think guys like Norm and John Candy and Gilbert Godfrey. I, I think they're gone and that hole exists. But I think AI is gonna find a way to bring them back. It won't be the pure authenticity of having them. Mm -hmm. But I also go in my head, won't it? Yeah, like it, it's so mm. it's getting so good and so refined that there might come a time where a simulation is so good it's almost better than what yeah. they were. And and for people who weren't born into the generation of a yeah. Norm or a John Candy, then they're not going to miss it. They're just going to embrace this new thing. God, I love this character. You know, it's so weird. So there's a lot of neat neat new beginnings that are going to happen for people that have passed and even though we miss them because we got to be organically around them yeah people who were never around them are going to embrace them as as much as you'd embrace you know the creation of a comic book character or, yeah you know so it's it's interesting to see what lies ahead for stand up wow yeah we have to wrap i have to yeah i gotta go to the bathroom finally I have to douche, by the way. You got a douche? Yeah. You got to find the... Do you have any Summer's Eve? Uh, I got a horse. Oh, can I ride it? Yeah, can right to Smell Town. Where are you going to ride it to? Smell Town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's got a ride. <laughs> you probably have a douche. You have sex with men sometimes. All right. Wow. What an ending. <laughs> yeah. Is that the ending? We don't no, ride it to... asshole. We but don't ride it to Smell it Town. Ending. We ride it to Flavor Town. <laughs> No, no, let me do it again. Leisure Town. No, no, no. Sin City. Flavor Town is what I say my, my vagina says because it looks like Guy Fieri because I got a bad wax job. Oh, no. Yeah. Where'd you get and it also, done, it's Madame really. Two sides? That's right. Oh, God. Yep. And she calls it Guy Fieri because it loves burgers and it's Just pretty eats obnoxious. Everything. <laughs> anything. I'll eat yeah. whatever. Anything you give to it. Do they do waxing it at Two Sods? No, they what make is, wax figures. Can you imagine laying down and getting a wax job while Sting People and the are looking Beatles at are Beyonce. watching you? And <laughs> yeah. The Rock is just standing there while you're getting waxed. Yeah, that's not the place to get waxed. No. no. But it is. It's you, a it's wax It's a place museum. to get waxed. Yeah. But it's not the place to get waxed. If you want to get waxed, you go there. Yeah. If you're looking to get waxed. Yeah. You can't go there. Anyway, I'm on Jordan well, Benson. Dot, where am I? Punchup.live slash Jordan Jensen for all her dates. Punchup.live slash Ian Finance for all mine. Check out her special Death Chunk. Check out my Wild, Happy, and Free on the podcast page. And uh, your new podcast, RIP yeah. Jordan Jensen. It's great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I got, I got, I got new apps coming out. Home to Thora Peak. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be fun. That's next week. Harlan, tell us everything. Uh, just check out the Harland Highway podcast on YouTube and uh, keep your eyes open for uh, my new movie, Wingman, coming out. Don't know when yet, but uh, hopefully soon. So, nice. Yeah. I'm so excited to listen to Harlan Highway. That's going to be my you. hologram of you leaving here oh, right now. You. I'm going to watch Rocket Man again. Are you? Oh, yeah. thank you. wouldn't you, shut man. the fuck up about it. One of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Was that, yeah? Oh, yeah. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. So did Ian. I uh -huh. could talk the whole show about that. Rocket Man. <gasps> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Next have, time. Next have fun, time. kid. Fun's my Chinese neighbor's middle name. Right? Yeah. I wrote that line. It, really? Yeah. I rewrote the whole script twice. Yeah. Disney. No way. You wrote that line? That line's so yeah, good. Yeah. I wrote that line. Yeah. Wait, I, you rewrote I re script. rewrote the whole script tw twice. Yeah. Disney let me do it. So I took every scene in the movie and just went, how do I make this funnier in my voice? And so, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. People don't know that. I didn't get credited for it. They actually fired the first writers. I got them hired back on because it was their first movie. Um, the guy who went on to do that show on HBO, uh, Chernobyl. 
Great uh-huh. show. And the new one, the the zombie one that he does with the with the fungus growing everywhere. Oh, Last oh. of Us. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, uh, he 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 wrote the original script for Rocket Man. No yeah. way. Oh. I can tell you all kind next, oh, time, next fuck. time. Wow. Oh, God, I want to know everything. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I don't want to keep you hostage. We'll uh, do it next time. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I am so happy Thank that you. you were here, man. Thank You're the you, best. Thank, Thank you, Harlan. You. Yeah, check yeah. it out. Harlan Highway, and uh, that's it. Yeah. See you guys next See time. See you guys. Bye. she really gone? Should we go watch? Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to put this up to the door so I can listen. Yeah.